Diamond Stone TV, OG Percy. Okay, 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 okay. Back in the flesh. Yeah, yeah, we here, man. Um, hey, man, I, I, I want to ask you. Uh, I want to ask you. Um, have you ever been calm while you was in prison? Oh yeah, man, nigga. Um, it was, it was very rarely a nigga could calm me. But yeah, I got nigga got. I remember yeah. I remember a nigga got down on me one time, man. Tell from a crib, man. I remember a nigga got down on me one time. I was on a unit in Brownsville, Texas, man. In Brownsville? I was on the Brownsville unit down there in Brownsville, man. Uh, Palestine or some some little unit down up in there. And uh, that was the year they took cigarettes out the system. Right. I remember we talked about that. Yeah, they took cigarettes out the system. I was on this little old unit, man. And, uh, all the white boys, you know, they had the money. Got down me went and bought up all the cigarettes. You understand me? And um, by the time the black people got down in the line, the cigarettes was gone. So what cigarettes you had, you had to put up. Me, I didn't smoke like a chain smoker, so I put up a lot of shit. But I had ran to the nigga named Shorty. Right. El Paso, Texas, man. From the EPT, that's what they call it. You know, this cat right here, no, he got down me. He was in all my business. Mm -hmm. He was in all my business, man, and you know? uh, he always got there, he stayed up under the nigga. And I always thought it was something up with the little nigga, but the little nigga kept playing me close and playing me cool and right. come to find out he was doing it because I had the cigarettes. You know, I didn't know it. He was, he was a hustler. This is his first time getting down on me, so I was like, he never came at me like this. So one time, you know, every time he came at me, I thought, you know, the little nigga was cool. So one time he came at me, you know, and I had some cigarettes. He said, say, man, I got a badass watch. Nigga wanna sell the watch for some cigarettes. So I'm like, cool, nigga, you do? He said, yeah, he said, you wanna sell some sell the watch for some squares. You know what I'm saying? He said, so what you gonna get for the watch? Look at the watch. The watch was clean the motherfucker. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, God damn, um. He said, man, just give he want 10 cigarettes for him. I said, alright. I gave, I gave, I gave I, um he had the watch. He, he said, let me go see what he wanna do. I gave him 10 cigarettes. I said, see if he wanna, if he wanna, um, just bring me the um, bring me the watch back. So nigga never, nigga left, I gave him cigarettes, he never came back. But what I didn't understand, the nigga live on the block with me. Right. And here it is, goddamn me, that was like 11 something that evening, here it good, it's going on two something. In the afternoon, goddamn, I'm like, yeah, what little shorty, that little shorty didn't come back to the block. He didn't come back. So I had one, shout out to my one nigga from El Paso, Texas, I call him EPT. Real cool youngster, man, you know. Big old stocky little nigga. He, me and him was tight. And he said, say, man, uh, shorty down there in the, um, right. in the laundry. Smoking your squares up, nigga. Uh, I was just sitting there. The nigga said he was ear hustling. And he heard the nigga say shit. Nigga, that, he wasn't giving you shit. And I told the nigga, I said, what? He said, nah, no, nah, I ain't bullshitting. I said, what you say yet? He said down in the laundry room. So we um we told the boss man that we was gonna go pick up our laundry. And then you go down there and pick up your clothes and shit, you know. He let us out off the block, we shot down there. Right. Just me and my partner about, oh, we on a mission. We on a mission. God damn it, we go down there. We go to the laundry window, it's not open. So we go down to the laundry door, it's cracked. Right. It's like a kick though. We we pop the door, we in. Right. Out of nowhere we see Shorty. Sitting on the on the thing with his leg capped up, smoking a cigarette. So I walked in, you know, goddamn, I'm like, yeah, with him and the other little laundry dude, that's the little click. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, to show you I'm square business. Right. Goddamn, I, I, right off the rip, shot it. Goddamn, what's up, shot it on? What a on? What a on? What, 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 what a watch it? He said, the nigga didn't want to sell the watch. I said, okay, cool. I said, yeah. what, what shit, what, what, give, me, give me the squares back then. And they said, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to holler at you when we get back on the block about that. Then I looked at the nigga. Like, what this nigga just say? No, I remember what my partner just told me. You understand me? The nigga said he wasn't paying me shit. That was my partner told me. So I said, nah, nigga. I said, go on, run them motherfucking on cigarettes right now, nigga. I ain't, I ain't got to wait. Just give me the squares I gave you. He said, nigga, if you can't wait, I'm saying show straight up, I, I ain't going to exaggerate nothing. The nigga said, if you can't wait, nigga, fuck it then. Nigga, it ain't none. I said, what? I said, that's what's up. I said, what's up? I said, so it ain't no, ain't no watch, ain't no square. He said, no. Nah. I pop, 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 Took pop, pop, pop. Right immediately, nigga started smoking his game. You know what I'm saying? I take off on the nigga. Bam, bam, bam. 
And they say, oh, nigga, oh, nigga, you hit like a bitch. Nigga, you hit like a bitch. Nigga, you hit like that. Shh, goddamn. Be quiet, nigga. The, you know, the law's down the hall, goddamn me. Drop so, the nigga. Oh! Look at you, 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 you good. Yeah. Caught on quick, Diamond. Diamond been around long enough. Yeah, shout out to Diamond Stone TV, man. Yeah, he, he dry up, snitching. He picked up quick on the um, the, the lingo, man. Yeah. Yeah, he been locked up too long with me. Yeah, you hear me? I'm institutional. Yeah, yeah, this yeah the, nigga, the nigga dry snitching. So by the time I, I tried to get him back in the paint, the nigga kept talking so loud, so I took off on him again. Bing, bing, by the time I take off again, I heard the keys coming down the hall. Here come the laws. When the law, I heard my pilot say, oh, the law's coming. The nigga sitting there like, goddamn, okay, cool. I said, yeah, nigga, chill. We gonna finish getting it. We gonna finish getting it, nigga. Right. She come off my shit, nigga. Yeah. You hear me? How, how, let me just add before we go any further. How, how old was you at this time? At this time, she, oh boy, young gun. I about like 26, 20, 25. Oh, but you were right, though. If you said at 26, 27, you were right. Oh, man, I'm all the way live. Yeah. Nigga, I'm in my Tyson prime. This right before you went to Lindsay Unit, Say, right? Say, um. Yeah, Brownfield, then it was Lindsay after Brownfield. Then you went to Dawson. Yeah, because I did a, yeah, I did a, um. You were in Dawson. Yeah. After you know, Dawson, you went to Ferguson. Right? After, da you know, after Dawson, I went to Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. That was the last stop. Yeah. And all before then, these are the units I went to. When I went to Brownsville, it was a parole violated facility. Because, um, I had already been to prison. I had been to Central Unit. Yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Yeah, later on, and then before that, I had went to Ramsey Unit. Yeah, I yeah, remember that. Yeah, um, but yeah, this cat right here, the laws run down there, and the law, when they run inside the room, you know, we, you know, real niggas that's been locked up with you, they know at the time when the laws come, nigga, shh, break down, niggas, go back to doing what you was doing, folding clothes, nigga, act like you busy. Right. You know, don't show your face if you been fighting, nigga, do something over on the side or something. You understand me? So watch that. The nigga walk in, since I think he on some gangster shit, and I'm gonna show y'all niggas this how niggas get when you think they on some gangster shit. When the laws walk in, bam. Dog is looking around like, what's going on? And he said, like I say, nigga, you hit like a bitch, nigga. I'm like, damn, this nigga still talking with the laws right here. So, you know, immediately the laws grab him. Hey, you, come here. What's going on? Oh, they see his nose bleeding. They see his nose bleeding. I'm talking about shit his eye down right off the rip. First two, nigga, I shut his eye. I shut his eye straight down. Yeah. And they see it. So I hear him taking him down, down the hall. I say, nigga, keep it 100, nigga. Keep it 100, nigga, keep it gangsta. That mean, nigga, don't shit, nigga, don't tell shit. They like, what's going on here, shit? Nothing, I'm trying to get back to the block. I just came down here to get my clothes. Me and my partner, we trying to get out there, motherfucker. So we get to the door to make it go, man, shit. The dogs come grab me, bam. Demerson, hands against the wall, such a handcuff me. Like, God damn. Come out there, motherfucker. I say, say, nigga, I say, keep it 100, nigga. Keep it 100, nigga. Don't, don't go in there saying I did shit. She said, oh, nigga, I ain't gonna say shit, nigga. I ain't gonna say shit. This is what the nigga say before they take him in. I'll find out what's going on. I'm sitting out in the hall handcuffed. He go in there and come back out. They take him straight to lock up. They tell me, Dempson, come on, you going with us. I'm like, all right, well, where we going? Oh, you going to lock up. For what? Oh, he said you jumped on him down here in the motherfucking room. I said, he said, what? Come on, man. He said, no, nah. he said, yeah, he said you jumped on him, man. Well, we gonna let the warden figure that in the morning. Well, the warden already been on my ass. Right. I, I already you told You already got yeah. too many cases over here. Uh, over here, um. I was a bad actor. And they still had free weights in the system. <laughs> oh, this is before they took. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, y'all. Yeah, I was done when they had the free weights. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that part. That's why y'all niggas, niggas know how long this been. Notice when you hit Ferguson Unit, yeah. oh, ain't no you, you had got smaller than you was mm -hmm. when you was on Lindsay mm -hmm. Unit. Mm -hmm. You was big. You yeah, was on Suzuki and shit. They had that free weight. Yeah. You know, down there, uh, Lindsay didn't have no weights. Right. No weights in Lindsay. That was all eating in, 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 in um, cardiac. Cardiac working out, push ups and shit. Cardio. Yeah, cardio. Just had a lot of goddamn me eating over there. Yeah. They feed you good. You had no choice but to goddamn me swole up over there. You eat and work out. Yeah. <laughs> Get your paper on. You heard me? Yeah, but um, but back there in, in this prison, on Brownsville, they still had the bullpen, man. You go out there and hit that iron at free weights. The niggas over there was big. And um, but anyway, this nigga told it on me. And the warden didn't like me over there. Cause when he called me in the first time, he called me, you know, writing a lot of prayer for there, your gang shit that was going outside this unit. He wanted me to see, you know, back then you couldn't write. You know, you're supposed to start, you know, you was a game member. I mean, shit, it's up to you to put the shit on your envelope. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck, nigga. I was putting five dudes who were crib gang, all type of shit on my envelope. 
And he was, and every time my mail came through, one day he came and sent for me. And uh, he got pissed off. I guess he had went through my, my, um, <laughs> my little old time sheet. All I had was two years. All I had was two years. And shit, man, I'm gonna tell you something. I turned two years into down there five or six years. Cause I couldn't, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Man, what, what? I turned two years into five or six years. Niggas just about, um, uh, fucking up. Keep going back and forth, cause you can't finish your two years, so you start over. You dig what I'm saying? Till you get that two years out the way. So the warden, the warden called me down to his office one day, and he said, Demerson. He said, I want to know, he said, um, I had been writing a lot of gang shit on my envelopes. He wanted to know what was going on with me. He said, let me ask you a question. So he said, um, what's taking you so long to finish these two years? Yeah. Mr. Dims. I said, I said, that shit, nothing, man. He looked at me, let me get laid back in the seat. He said, nothing's yeah. like that, no. He said, let me get a guard to stand on that side of Dims and get, get me another guard on that side of him. And there's two guards, the officers had about like five officers already standing in there while he was talking to me. And uh, he said, let me get one to stand on this side and one to stand on that side. And then I never forgot, he got up from behind the desk. He walked around the desk, he got in my face. He said, that's your mother. He said, put your hand behind your back. And he had a, he had a real good hard breathe in his face. And he had that, he had that racist, that real, real, real square business racist look on his right. face. And he walked from around the desk and he got in my face. He told me, put your hands behind your back. Yeah, and I had that meat man on. And when he had asked me the question, though, I guess it pissed him off. Because when he asked me, he said, it was taking me so long to complete this two-year sentence. Right. And I said nothing, man. Nothing, man. Nothing, man. So, like I said, he told the two guards that he walked around and got in my face. He said, you know what? Put your hands behind your back. And when he said it, he had a look in his eyes. I knew, I knew the white man was square business. Right. So I, I know. Put me, he, said, he said, that's your goddamn problem. Right there. Yeah, man. No, man. He said, ain't your motherfucking homeboy. He said, you don't fucking yell man me. You say sir around her. He said, you understand me? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, enjoy the rest of your two years here, Mr. Dimson. He said, I guess since you don't want to uh, get out here and do parole and complete your parole and do like you told, I guess I'll go and let you finish your whole two years here. He said, have a good day. I said, God damn. I don't want to do my whole motherfucking two years. You hear me? Shit, I want to go home like everybody else. But he was like, if I continue to do what I was doing, he was going to make me stay longer. So here it is, man. Goddamn me, bam. I got into this badass fight with this motherfucking nigga over these goddamn cigarettes. The next morning, I get, I get put in lockup that evening. Early that morning, about 5.30, they come get me, man, and walk me in this motherfucking office. And guess who's sitting there? The big-ass warden again with that look on his face. Just got off my ass the other day about some bullshit. Right, right. And here it is. Here it is. I'm back in the office. He said, Demerson. He said, I guess you didn't realize what I said that I told him. Yes, sir. I knew he was a mean dude. I knew he was square bitten. He had, he had all that. I seen it in his eyes. Goddamn. He said, um. He said, I let you out of lockup the other day, you know. Right. Here you is back in my office in lockup again. He said, well, Mr. Demerson. He said, he said, what? He said, what, what was this about? He said, don't tell me, don't, don't, don't tell me. I, I already know, I did my homework. This is my unit, I run this shit. You know, he reached, he reached in his desk and he came out. He said, you were looking for this, wasn't you? In his hand, he had the watch. I'm like, God damn, that's, that's, the, that's the watch. He said, and you were looking for these, wasn't you? And he had the cigarettes. And the other hand, I'm like, God damn. The watch and the square. Shit. I would, shit. I was busted. I couldn't make up my mind to tell him what the fuck. You know, see, I didn't want to say I was fighting him or what the reason, but the man already had the story together. Mm. I was looking real weak. But he said, you know what, Dempson? I'm going to let you out today. Right. I'm going to let you out. I'm like, shit, you going to let me out? Shit, nigga, got the watch it. He said, um. I'm not gonna give you the cigarettes, but I'm gonna give you your watch because you paid for it. <laughs> right. He said, the reason I'm gonna let you out, he said, because I'm real. He said, a convict, a nigga got tried to convict, a con tried to con, a convict. That's what he said. 
He said that nigga tried to have Snicky tried to get in on you with the cigarettes and the watch game. He said, yeah, and I don't condone that. The, the, the white man was square business. The white man was square business. He, he didn't play no games. He let me out. Yeah. I'm like, ah, damn. I said, goddamn what? No shit. I'm going to just do my time and get the fuck from over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do my time. Just leave it. I got to get off this unit, man. He ain't playing. And man, I, and I put this on everything, no cap, no nothing, man. I got a homeboy. Shout out to my nigga Daryl, man, out of California, man. I was in the hallway, man. I'm gonna show you how bad my luck was at that time. This is fucked up. You know, my partner walked up to me. I was a big nigga. You know what I'm saying? Me, I had my weight up and everything. I would grab my homeboy, we shook hands one time. And when I shook his hand, I did him like this. When I did him like this, his whole arm went out of socket. Nah, man. I put that on everything, my right hand to God, right hand to God. When I, I shake his hand like this, you know how you just do a, a, a shake, a hand shake, you, you, you shake it? When I shook it, nigga, the whole nigga arm popped out of socket. You heard and it went down to the, I like, God damn, he's like, oh, oh shit, man, my arm, my arm. I thought it was high side and bullshit, and he's like, no. Nah. And so the laws ran up for real, and they grabbed and they took him to, um, to, the, to, the, um, to the nurse, the infirmary. Like, yeah, they said, Demerson. Put your hands, what happened? I said, man, I just shook his hand. It's on case. He said, put your hands behind your back. Wait a minute, hold on. Nigga, I just shook his hand. No. Nigga locked me up. I went back, back to solitary. Guess who I had to see the next morning? Damn. <laughs> the warning. <laughs> Mandatory. When you go to lock up, you see war the next day. Just like Mr. Peterson and Mr. Yeah. Peterson. And this man was like, shaking his head when he see me. He said, don't say nothing. Looking even weaker. He say, I don't wanna he say, I don't wanna smell your name. Do you understand me? I said, yes, sir. He said, get out of my face. And they let me out of lock up. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. Shit, nigga, I can't shake a nigga hand, nigga. I can't goddamn me get me no why. I can't shh. I better get off this unit. Yeah. Yeah, I did my little time over there and they oh and um. So how much time you say you do again? Uh, over on that little unit, man, it was like, watch this, it was a 76 day facility. Man, I ended up doing um, 120 days over there. Mm. I fucked it out. Here goes another, that, later on, if I'm getting ready to get out, and I missed my first date. Oh, oh, let me show you how the little nigga got down. The little nigga that, that got the cigarettes right. and hit me for the watch and shit, he got down on me. I had me a little piece of game. Everybody know what a piece of game is when you're working. That's, that's the officer that you know they cut for you. Yeah. And the one that cut it for me, she just happened to be over the disciplinary actions. And uh, the little nigga told it on me. So one day, uh, they came there and packed all my shit up. They got all my notes and, and for, for some reason, every time she wrote me, she would tell me, turn it up. Read it, turn it up and get rid of it. And I always did what she said. And thank God, man, I had a letter in there from the, that I did get rid of. I had, she first wrote me. I was just so infatuated with the letter. You know, I just read the motherfucker like a book. You heard me? You know, and I kept it over. Right. You know, one day they came and picked me up because of what the little nigga said. Say, man, uh, y'all got me locked up back here. Back there went to snitching. He said, well, you know, he fuck with the law, Miss such and such. And she worked over disciplinary, she ain't gonna charge him or nothing, man. Such and such, they what? They went and grabbed her and they walked off the unit. Pending investigation, she was under 72 hour investigation according to what the inmate said. And they locked me back up. Went to my room, went to my jail cell, took out my mail envelope and they ran through everything looking for any information that would that damn me, you know, confirm what this nigga had told her so she can be fired, you understand me? And I can get more time. I ended up beating that case. The first letter he picked up was her letter. Yeah. And he threw it to the side. How you seen it when he I did? I seen it. it. Fucked me up. I'm like, damn. He picked the first letter he picked up out the group. He looked at it. And he threw it to the side. Then he started going through all the rest of the mail. Throwing it to the side. You know, looking yeah, for the guess I'm he like, damn. He checking better. I knew, I knew one thing. Yeah. Wasn't nothing else in there from her. The first one you grabbed, that was it. The first one, man. Fucked me up. He threw it to the side like, damn. It wasn't shit. And he, he couldn't even, he was looking for the handwriting. She had a specific handwriting and he couldn't even find it. It was the first one he picked up. And uh, I beat that case. Three, three days later, I got, a, I got a call to come down to the warden office at five in the motherfucking morning. Pissed off. 
I'm like, man, these people ain't gonna leave me the fuck alone. I'm like, what's up, Ward? Warden said, Dimson, you got a phone call. Yeah. I get on the phone and it's my mama. I said, my goddamn mama, hey, mama. My mama got on the phone call, on the phone in, and she told me my sister just passed away. My youngest sister. And I told the warden's officer, and what the fuck, dropped everything and went to just snagging shit.